questions that's not just uh, uh, make-believe, but that we can really look forward to? Well, I think there'll be a series of utilitarian benefits. There already are. Communications is obviously the most common that people take it for granted. Uh, what's becoming equally internalized in the, our society and other industrialized ones is, is location, global positioning satellites, beginning to get into the infrastructure. It's another utility. It's something, by the way, you could jam during a war. Yeah, but it's uh, so now the, the military has to deal with it. Increasingly well, right. more difficult when you have thousands of satellites, right, right. It, low, but, high, But the point being stratum. is, it's, you know, we can also set off a nuclear bomb and knock out an electrical power system for a country, too. But that didn't yeah. happen. Well, I'm talking so about that, potential of information warfare undermining yeah. these right. communication structures. Well, anyhow, what about non-utilitarian? That's what I wanted to get to. That, that, that was to thank Mars. you very much. <laughs> because that's the point. It doesn't make a lot of difference whether you do this on the Earth or above the Earth. It's really a question of cost and of effectiveness. So the real issue about space is not will it give us better utilitarian things, but rather what can it do for our spirit? Not right. so much for our right. body. And what it says about us as human beings. It says about us. There's no which... way you can justify going to Mars on an economic That's basis. That's right. And obviously one answer to that is science. The yeah. more we Ed, learn Ed, about it. Wa Ed wants to go to Mars. Okay. Yeah. Well, keep, keep your hopes up. <laughs> the more we learn about our environment, just as we did at first in the Earth, it helps us overall. And That's certainly true with Mars or with Venus or other places. You're going to send carbon or silicon? But the issue is we've been sending silicon because that's all we can send. At that, that is robots. So that combination is going to change with more and more capacity on the robotic side, the silicon side. And a fusion is going to emerge, unlike ever seen before, between humans and machines. And that's what we're going, most of us are going to see the solar system. With. Will that help our spirit? So far it has. So far, I'm, I'm the president of the Planetary Society, and we survive with the pleasure of 100,000 people that send in their dues every year. We don't have any big aerospace companies backing us, nothing else. And we do because we represent hope. We represent a, a link to the possibilities of the future. That will keep it going, provided the space systems bring back new stuff, stuff that's interesting, and most importantly, make it interactive. The I'm new phase of space exploration is having humans interacting with systems that are really operating on Mars and places like that. I think the, the to me, what space illustrates is our ability to deal with linear, predictable systems and our inability to deal with uh, nonlinear loop systems. And uh, the more we put our effort into say, well, let's deal with what we can deal with, you know, a bigger rocket, better sensing, and so on and so on, the more we move away and neglect the more complex systems, social behavior, interaction, poverty, crime, and so on. And I think if we put as much effort into those areas, intellectual and financial, as we do into the linear systems, we'd make a huge but difference. You should feel good. We're yeah. doing exactly that. We're reducing the, both the absolute and the relative yeah. expenditures on space exploration in this country and in every other country in the world. And, and we're Not the world. On prisons than ever before. Well, we're also spending more on consumption, on commercial products. But this is, yeah. this is human right. beings. That's I mean, right. reaching for but the anyway, stars don't and living worry. in the dark. That's an old <laughs> argument. That's the argument of the 60s that uh, the, the, the societies have made their judgments part of this decentralization, and there's less going into space no, exploration. but that's not well, what I said. You see, I didn't say there should be less going to space. I said we should right. put effort into other areas, not that's just right. less but into I, space. It is, doesn't make more into other there areas. There is more going into other areas. There's not. Yes, if, look, the, no. the gross national product is doubling every 10 years. The space fraction's going down. Yes. Obviously, it's going somewhere no, else. it's not. That's my whole point. If you if you stop spending on uh, meat, it doesn't mean you're spending more on milk. But you're spending on something. Uh, ah, yes. That's my point. But my and point those is, are the if social you gave that are being the made. same priorities well, to crime a... and so on as we gave to space with the same effort, we would make a huge difference. Not just spending less on space. We, ha we have to give a priority to the last question. We have a prediction. 25 years from now, look back. What is the biggest surprise unforeseen today? Bruce. In the 25 years from now? The biggest surprise we probably wouldn't recognize because we, that is our descendants, will have changed in a way we would not recognize. Just like I, my grandfather and I are separated forever by cultural and psychological differences. Ed? Everyone will be wearing face jewelry. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you were going to say something about that. <laughs> I think the extraordinary advances in uh, human intellect and understanding with information doubling every five years and 
uh, knowledge every two and a half years, six to 18 months for some disciplines, the ability to acquire knowledge, to use it well and effectively for the cause and the course of humanity will come to pass. Good. Uh, I think the biggest surprises are going to be on the positive side, uh, surprising uh, use of gene therapy in uh, over a range of uh, human diseases. On, a, on the negative side, uh, uh, a very scary future for biological warfare. Bart? I agree. We'll be able to manipulate our genes, at least to some degree. There will be artificial eyes. And at the social level, a uh, small level, we'll have mail on Sunday, and we'll end <laughs> And you'll see, wake up one day, and the uh, drugs will be legalized, and this massive transfer of wealth from the taxpayers to drug dealers will be gone. One way to forecast the future is to use what has happened to predict what will happen. In 1943, the chairman of IBM said that the world market for computers is maybe five. Theory says that if you plan the future, you can influence events and react quickly to surprise. Yet, there's a chance that something really unexpected will occur by the year 2025. I hope to still be doing this show with less hair and more makeup, amused at how naive I had been. And finally, after all that time, I may find myself closer to truth. I'm Robert Kuhn.